Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thank you so much for checking in today. I'm out here in the backwoods, made a little bush camp. We're gonna be doing some backwoods cooking here real soon. But I thought I would take the opportunity to showcase a blade. Now, the blade that I'm gonna be showcasing is a pretty controversial blade in the knife community. Folks are divided like the Hatfields and the McCoys. You either really love this blade or you're really gonna hate this blade. The blade I'm talking about is the Tom Brown Tracker. Now, the one that we're gonna be showcasing today is the T4. I also own a T1, and I'm not gonna lie, it is a huge piece of steel, and uh, it's a pretty good learning curve to learn how to use that. This one, though, is a pretty cool little neck knife or a companion knife. Today I'm going to showcase its capabilities, but first we're going to do a quick specs rundown. As always, we're going to get up close and personal. We'll do some practical application, and then I'll come back as always for some final thoughts. Folks, you're not going to want to miss this video. We're talking about the Tom Brown Tracker, baby. It starts now. You folks know how much I love batoning with a blade, which is pretty much non-existent on this channel, but you folks love to see it, so I'm gonna deliver the goods. So with this little T4, yeah, we're only doing about two inch diameter tree limbs, and that's all you're really gonna do with this is just fire starter, kindling, stuff like that, little woods projects. Now this is a pretty much petrified limb. They had a forest fire up here probably about six, seven years ago. And it pretty much burned up everything around here. But uh, the T4 busts through there pretty good. Now we're gonna be doing some cooking here in a bit, so cutting down this tree limb might uh, pose as an advantage with our stoves. Of course, this tree limb's all twisted, but we use what we have, not what we wish we had. So, batoning, I think we proved that that works. Let's uh, see how this works as like a draw knife. So I'm gonna stick it in the corner here where I can get it. And then let's go with the corner of it. Do it so you guys can see it on camera here. This is where this blade really excels. So if you're doing little camp projects, And you need a draw knife to really cut out a bunch of wood. This works really well. Now, I'm thinking an advantage of the T4 over the full size T1 is that it's coming in 1 8 inch 1095 high carbon steel. So, for doing curls, using that hook. Just makes those nice little corkscrew curls. Get in with that, that little hook that you would use, say, if you're uh, cleaning fish or cleaning game with. You could sit here all day and make these nice, just paper thin onion skin curls with this. Now with anything, it's gonna take a little practice. You don't wanna slip, because you could really injure yourself. But with a little bit of practice, 
that's what you have. Let's see how well the point works in regards to uh, carving. Let's uh, now one thing Tops is noted for is the teeth on the saw blades actually work. So if you needed to score some bone, or if you need to make a notch to put some paracord, say you're making tent stakes, or you're just doing some camp craft projects. Let's see if we can't get this going here. Look at that, nice little notch. Now, granted, this is softwood, but I love the teeth on here are offset, almost like a chainsaw. So it works really well at notching. So if you need to make traps, or like I said, you're doing some little camp craft project, or even if you're into pioneering like the scouts do, and you just need to make a little channel to get some paracord or some rope around, this little neck knife is really working it. Now, the front part of this blade is really designed as like a skinning knife. So if I was gonna skin, and here's an advantage of the T4 as opposed to the uh, full size T1, I can really just hook my finger in there and just get up in there or ring finger and now I have total control of this blade for gutting, skinning, cleaning game. Just a nice little sweep, almost like a ulu on there. So that would work really well. Say we're gonna simulate making a fireboard. How would this work as far as if you're gonna do the initial divot? Pretty good at making divots. Another use of this saw back is just saying that you need to create some little microscopic tinder fire starter stuff. Use the back of the saw and you just run it at a 45 in an upward motion. Run it both ways and now you're just creating just a lot of micro fire starting material. And if you need to remove stock really quick on something, not bad. Of course, it's all over the place, but I would do it on a tarp or a napkin. And now you got stuff for your bird's nest and getting that fire going. So we have sort of a square piece of wood. Say we're trying to do a uh, spindle for a bow drill. And of course, this probably isn't the perfect piece for this, but I'm just taking a section really quick and just rounding off all the edges on it. So if I had to manufacture arrows out in the woods, say I'm just a hardcore traditional guy and I'm out there looking for willow and I'm just trying to get it straight. It's 
that's one good thing about this hook on this blade just does a great job rounding that out what's cool is it just made quick work of that so it gives you an idea if I took a little more time and care you could really get a nice looking dowel out of that so here's my attempt at a tri stick with the uh, T4 Did a little hook little dowel flat part and then a scraper and I made the whole stick into a round dowel so I've been whittling around on this for a while feels really good in the hand now for some final thoughts on the Topps Knives Tom Brown Tracker T4 first off it is by no means the T1 and I'm going to elaborate on that the T1 is a huge honking blade. It's a quarter inch of steel. And the one that I have, I've used it and I've carved things with it and it works nice. But the T4 as a small neck knife companion knife, I have to say this is the cat's meow. I really love the eighth inch thick steel. The 1095 works really well tops with their differential heat treat you just know that this knife is going to be bomb proof i really love the size of the handle my hand fit in there and i have medium sized hands my index ring and um, middle finger fit in there really good that little up sweep on the spine works really well with my thumb no jimping required on that the saw worked really well. You saw that it made curls and the draw knife worked. And I just know that uh, if you have a trap line or you're a hunter or you're a fisherman, that this Ulu style blade edge is just gonna be an awesome skinner, cleaning game, processing. It's just gonna be outstanding for that. Now, I just touched upon just a few of the tasks that this tracker can do. I am by no means a master woodsman. There's guys out there that can work these trackers that would make me look like child's play. What I wanted to do today was to get it out in front of you because this is a very controversial knife. You either love this blade or you're just really gonna hate it. And I just wanted to show folks that this small version I think has a place in a lot of people's kits. You can use it as a neck knife. Uh, you can wear it on your belt, scout style. Has a really cool Kydex sheath. And here, I'll take it off my uh, belt if I can. And um, there's a bunch of uh, different mounting options that you can do. Now, secures really good in there. Nice little interference fit. Clip on the back. As you can see, you can mount this up or down, left or right. And I've seen folks just use it as a dangler, just hanging around their neck. It's gonna work really good. I love the size of it. I love the eighth inch 1095 high carbon steel. I think it's just a win. Now, normally I rate my blades on a scale of one star to five stars. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I want to hear from you. This is a partnership between you and I. So let your voice be heard. Uh, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. Rate it between one and five. One being a dumper, five being a grand slam. What I'll do is I'll tabulate the votes later on with the accounting firm of Wingman and Wingman. We'll, we'll just tally it up. And then I'll come back maybe in a follow-up video and I'll let you folks know what the community thought of this blade so with that i want to thank you folks so much for watching if you're not a subscriber hey what are you doing click that subscribe button be part of the action also if you're a subscriber and you're not getting updates there's a little bell right beside the subscribe button click that it'll send you an email every time i upload a new video a lot of times folks say hey i never get any updates well if you click that bell 
it's going to shoot it right to your inbox. With that said, folks, this is John with the Wingman 115 channel. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Now, I'm going to get outside and play. We're about ready to cook some grub out here. Take care.